So I want you to remember back some 15 years or so to the first time that Google Maps was a thing, okay? The first time that Google Maps was a thing. I don't know if you've been introduced to early Google Maps, but let me tell you how it works. There used to be a day and age in which if you wanted to use the internet, it was new and cool. And so what would happen is you would take your phone line out and you would plug it into your computer and then it would make some really strange noise. <laughs> Right, And then a few minutes later, you would get onto a very plain texted sort of internet and you could go to Google Maps. It would take about five minutes for it to load, <laughs> okay? And there you would type in the address of a place that you wanted to go. And there would be no pictures. There would be none of the beautiful, there would be no voice telling you to turn left now. It wouldn't fit on your, on your uh, you know, dash, but you would get this long list of different roads to turn on, and you would print that out. And then as long as you followed those rules exactly and carefully, as long as you did every little bit, you would arrive safely to your destination and it was not confusing at all. Now, before Google Maps came a thing, what usually happened is first the phone call, yeah? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna visit. Um, how, 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 how do I get there? And you, you write it on the piece of paper, try to take good notes, turn left at the giant mural. Yes, got it, okay, <laughs> go, go right. If all else fails, head north, yeah? And this is what you would do, and then that would all fall through, okay? You would lose your way, you would be totally lost, and then you would roll down your window and come to a stop somewhere, and there would be somebody, and you say, hey, 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 which way to where I wanna go? And it was a mess. And sometimes it really melted down. Like you didn't get to where you wanted, that was it. And Google Maps changed that in this wonderful way. As long as you carefully looked over the map, carefully read the instructions, you would get where you were supposed to go. Now, as we return to Proverbs, we asked the question, how do I get where I really wanna go in life? If that is what you want, yes? We all want to get to where we're supposed to go. How, how, how do I get to what I'm supposed to be? How do I go where I'm supposed to go? How does this end right? And how does the journey look the way it should? And to us, God says, look, here, a roadmap. Wisdom. Look, I have a roadmap for you. I, I'll show you what to do. It will guide you on your journey. You'll become everything that you're meant to be. Treasure wisdom. Be open. Really listen because it will help you start right. It will keep you going. And it'll make sure you don't get lost on the way. Treasure wisdom. Be open. Really listen because it will help you start right. It will keep you going. And it will make sure you don't get lost on the way. So let's consider how wisdom can start us on our journey. And I'm just going to grab a Bible here because I realized I haven't brought one up yet. This is in Proverbs chapter three. I'm sorry, chapter four. So let's turn to Proverbs four if you're not there already. And we are going to uh, start in verse one. It's on page 638, starting in verse one. Listen, my son, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commandments and you will live. Or keep my commandments and live. It's a command. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Don't forsake wisdom. She'll protect you. Love her. She'll watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. So uh, we have this parent's plea. There's lots of these in the book of Proverbs. And so the parent is pleading with the child that is soon to be an adult or has begun to, to be an adult, as it were. And, they, and the, the, child, the, the, the parent says, listen, get 
wisdom. It, it's going to go well for you. You're going to be crowned and honored and things are going to go the right way. Now, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to, for things to go well for them and to, to be crowned and to be honored and have things uh, be successful? We, we all want this. And so this is, this is a, a good thing that the parent wants. And listen, this occurs over and over in the book of Proverbs. There's lots and lots of uh, moments where the parent says to the child, get wisdom, get understanding, learn these things. It will help you. And, and the reason that it happens over and over is because this is absolutely critical. It's absolutely critical to start life right. Young people, they are making decisions right now that will set in motion the, the rest of their life. I can look back to the time when I was, uh, you know, in that stage from, from 15 to about 18, and I can see all the little kernels for what would become full-grown things later in my life. It's so important for you, young person. I hope you hear this this morning. This book is for you, and the book is saying, listen, it's so important right now, right now, plant wisdom. Right now, get wisdom, because it's going to pay off later for you. In fact, it's the one thing that you really need or it's all going to go so wrong. Please take it. And so for parents, how important is it that we show our child the value of our faith, the reality of God's existence, the love of Jesus and the holiness of God, that he does not tolerate sin, but that he loves us and he has sent Jesus. How important is it that we instill in our children, these things matter to me and they, they should matter to you. They're important to you. And when your child is ready to leave the house, don't just say to them, now you just do whatever you want, kiddo. Don't, that, that, that's not here. We don't see him doing that here. Just go ahead, kid. Now your choice, you go. It says command. there's commands here. Take wisdom. Keep these things. Live. The, the, the father commands his child, son, live. Choose life. Well, we're not to just say, I, you know, now just go and play the field, figure out what's going on. You try this, try that. Find something that works for you, kiddo. No. Get wisdom. If you can, instill that. Tell your children, I'm so happy to have you as a child. And now that I'm sending you, I so desire that you would walk the path of life. Now, he says here, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Because once I was your age, kiddo, <laughs> and when I was your age, I listened to my dad. And you know, I think my dad was your age once. And he listened to his dad. In fact, there's this long tradition of listening to this one thing. And if you'll do it, it will set you on a course for life. That's the idea, the tradition. It's like um, if you're in Italy, you know, and you want to go buy fancy shoes, right? You go in there and what you find out is they're going to make it by hand. They're going to make it by hand in the next two weeks, right? Or it could be even less. It could be very, very quick. And it's going to cost you a ton of money. And they are going to do the same thing that their father did, that their father did, that their father did, that their, you know, whoever, it goes all the way back a few hundred years. This is how we make shoes. We know exactly how it's done. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. That'll be 300 pounds because it works. And this is the one thing that will work. And the question is, will we walk by it ourselves? Will we choose to walk the path that we know this one path, this is going to take us to freedom? So how can we start our journey right? What is actually being asked of us here? Well, he says, get wisdom. In all of your getting, get understanding. That's one translation of what we have here. Though it costs you all you have. And so the idea is that we actually, we don't have wisdom naturally. We don't wake up one day and say, oh, I've just been born wise. It's something that must be purchased. That's the nature of the word here. It must be purchased. It's actually, it's costly. It costs all that you have. Oh, wait a minute. What is that about? I mean, uh, we believe in God's grace. Jesus came. He died for our sins. It's a free gift. It, we don't earn our salvation. So how can we talk about wisdom being costly? 
Well, even though Jesus has died for us and loves us and it's a free gift, it's, it's not cheap to take that gift. It, it costs your whole life. It, it, it swallows up everything. It, if, you, if you're going to believe this, it changes who you are and what you're going to do and where you're going to go. And also, you have to stop doing all the things that you were doing before that you thought that leads to life. Um, ha have you met someone who uh, was a Christian, but you knew them before they were a Christian? And when they became a Christian, it was like, whoa, I've never met this person. Totally, utterly different, and hopefully in a good way. That's what's supposed to happen. It co it's costly to follow Christ. Why is it costly? Because basically you're saying, this is my life and I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to spend my time. It costs, it costs the only thing that you guys actually have, which is time. You give it to the Lord. Now look, the, uh, Solomon says, listen to my instruction. And that word instruction has the word turning in it. Like, turn your foot from evil in the previous chapter, and it's going to say, turn your foot from evil in this chapter as well. Same, same word, that, that it has that little core in it. So the instruction is, you don't know what you're doing. Turn from that and go this direction. You don't have something. It's costly. You have to surrender to it. And then this idea is, you have to repent of what you're doing right now. This, this is the wisdom. The wisdom of God. How do we start on the journey? The answer is, we, we repent of what we are doing, we turn towards God's instruction, we surrender to him. And that's how we start our journey. That, that's how we start the path that goes to life. I'm not going the right direction. I'm turning away from the wrong direction. I'm surrendering to wisdom. I'm surrendering to Christ. I'm surrendering to his love. So wisdom starts our journey right through repentance and through surrendering to God's ways and God's truth. And then it keeps us going. It keeps us going. Wisdom keeps us going as we, we will see. We shun evil. We see the path. Verse uh, 10 now. <clears throat> Listen, my son, accept what I say. And the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you'll not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Don't let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn from it. Go on your way. And go on your way. For they cannot rest until they do evil. They're robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They don't know what makes them stumble. So we are, I think, prone to think this of life. That there are many different paths one could take. That they are mostly laudable that they are very pleasant, they lead to, to all sorts of things, but who's to, who's to fault them? And just as long as you uh, craft your own narrative, everything is great and enjoy, and, and there's no criticism here. Many paths, don't worry about it. And we think of religion that way too. Many paths to God, let's not get specific. I have my specific one, but you also have your specific one, and let's not, let's not quibble here. And the Bible says there's just two. And one we want nothing to do with. There are just two paths. And one we want nothing to do with. And that second path, it keeps intersecting our own path. It, it, over and over and over again, the two paths cross. Daily there's decisions. Which way am I going to go today? Um, and so we've made the choice to follow God, to start on the journey, uh, to trust him, to surrender to him. But then the next day, there's temptation. Wait a minute. Maybe you ought to do something else. Uh, this is really interesting. My, my, my father, actually, uh, he came from a very broken background. Uh, and he was a very broken person doing a lot of bad stuff. And then he met the Lord. And the next morning, he woke up. He was brushing his teeth. And a little voice said, so, Don, you're a Christian now? Come on, what a joke. 
you'll never change. The voice that calls you to return to your path. Every day we choose what path we will walk on. Every day. I think journaling is great. Uh, and one of the reasons it's great is because uh, over the course of my life, as I have journaled, it's hard to do. I I've seen there's about 20 reoccurring issues in me, 20 character problems. There's probably more. You can tell me about them later. Okay. But, but 20 things that I know of, they, they just, just keep coming up. I, 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 I face them once, but and that's not it. I will face this again and I will be tempted again. It will be there again. And I have to continue on in faith and I can see it. I can see it clearly to get off the one road to go a different direction. And so Proverbs, Solomon, he says here, here's my advice to you. Don't give that stuff an inch and don't give it a foothold. An inch, that's an American term. What's a better term? Don't give that stuff an inch is fine. Don't give it anything. Give it no opportunity. Don't let it in the door. Don't look that way, it says. Now, um, <laughs> I love my illustrations. I love jelly donuts, okay? I love jelly donuts. And as you can see, I've been eating a fair bit of them lately, yeah? Um, it shows up even in the video. Uh, and uh, the other day, my wife says, oh, look, jelly donuts. When did you get those? You know, and she, she, caught, she caught me out. That's like the third pack of jelly donuts you've had in the last month. Did you get that whilst away from me? Yeah? <laughs> so, so how did I get these jelly donuts? How did they end up showing up in my kitchen? The, the answer is, on a day when I'm not doing grocery, I walk by the grocery store, the Tesco's, the Weight Rose, the Sainsbury, especially Sainsbury, okay? And, and, I, and I go, oh, I wouldn't, what's the harm in seeing what's on offer? I'll just walk in. So, and I walk and guess what? It's always like a pound. Sin is cheap. Sin is cheap. Here, here, it's a pound. You can get five of them for a pound. That's technically, if you didn't eat them all in one sitting, that's like five days worth of, of sugar there. And before you know it, I've got it in my hand. And I didn't bring a bag, right? So I walked down with the, with the sin in my hand before all people to see. And I eat something that's just going to clog my arteries, has no nutritional value, uh, and it will leave me off worse than where I started. Don't even go there. Don't walk in the grocery store. Better yet, if it's really an issue, walk on the other side. Now listen, a lot of this walking is in your heart. So we're not, we're not advocating that you just separate out of the world and never ever touch, never ever go there. Although for some of us, and some issues, that's exactly what you need to do. <laughs> but turn your heart first. Turn your heart most. Because that level, that leads to destruction. Now, now this is, uh, uh, you know, the society says, no, no, be open to everything. No, 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 no. How could you, how could you close yourself off to, to, to something and, 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 you know, that, that mantra is just terrible advice. Be open. Just be open. Be open to everything. Horrible, horrible advice. We don't tell people who are sniffing glue, you know, be continue to be open with that. That's a good thing. Do you, do you drink petrol because you'll get high? Continue that. No, no, that's awful. And yet there are things if you open yourself up to, if you just, if someone tells you, just be open, just try this. If you open yourself up, it's exactly like drinking petrol. That's exactly what it will do for you. Because one step, and you end up being like the person that's described here. What does it say? They're totally and utterly defined by their sin. They eat the bread of sin. That means what nurtures them, what feeds them, is to do what is wrong. They find their life is most lived when they're doing something that leads to destruction. Do you know someone like that? They feel alive. The only way they can feel alive is doing something harmful and painful to themselves. That's every person who takes that first step and then continues down that road. And so Solomon says, don't go that direction. Don't touch it. Don't let sin define you. It starts with that one step in the wrong direction. 
Now look, it has this beautiful picture of righteousness. I hope we hear this. So that's all negative. Oh, Tim, what a downer. They hear this lovely picture of righteousness. The, the path of the righteousness, it says, is like the, the, the sun, morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. And, and so uh, if you actually are up early, which is a good thing, it hasn't happened lately. Maybe this morning you had this possibility because we set, set forward time. But uh, anyway, you, so you wake up early and that moment that the, the, the light appears on the horizon. And then it's, it's literally minutes before it's lit up the whole world. From that little light to let it light up the whole world. And what, that's our life right now. We have the glimmer of light and we're holding out and we're saying, I'm walking on that path. Don't worry. Very soon, the whole world is going to be lit. It's gonna, and it's just going to go from better to better to better. For those following Christ, for those loving Christ, it just gets better and better and better. And then you get the ending and the ending is the best. And it's just the beginning of a new story that just keeps getting better and better and better. That never changes. How wonderful. And then we, we're told in passing, oh, by the way, that the, the ones that dwell in the dark, it just gets darker and darker and darker. They trip on something. They know not what, and they're, they're smashed by it. Don't go that way. And so we keep going on journey because we see these two paths. We know, oh, there's another path, but I know where that goes, and I shun it. And it keeps us focused. Now, I know we all struggle with sin. I know that this week we're all going to say, I'm going to try my very best not to sin. We're all going to sin a whole lot. So, Tim, are you just trying to make me feel bad? No. <laughs> Rather, the idea that is being presented here is that we would be quicker to realize that we're in the wrong place, that we wouldn't treat doing the wrong thing casually, but the, the, the moment that we realize that we are off path, we'll get better at being able to repent of that and, and to turn back to the Lord. That, that's what I'm hoping for here. That we will become quicker. It, because see, what happens is we tend to say, oh, it's human nature. Oh, you know, this is the way it's going to be. You know, I, I'm fallen and sinful. And this is the way it'll be till I die. You know, terrible. So I guess I'll just enjoy this. And to us, God would say, no, the moment you see you're off course, turn back. Get better at that, doing that more and more and more until, in fact, you just don't even need it. So we start the journey right by receiving God's grace and surrendering to him. We continue by shunning the other path, keeping on the good one. Now, lastly, wisdom keeps us from getting lost by guiding us through God's love, which we've internalized. So we've internalized God's love and his truth, and that, that keeps us doing the right sort of things, going the right sort of direction. And we see this in verse uh, 20 here. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Don't turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Keep your foot from evil. So uh, this uh, proverb, section of Proverbs, begins and ends in kind of a similar fashion, right? There's the second statement by the father. Listen, take wisdom, really receive this, pay attention and then he says within that, he says, it's your life. Wisdom is your life. And that is something worth thinking about. We have all, way, all sorts of ways that we think, if I do these things, then I'm really living. This is what it means for me to live, we say. This, doing this. But here, here's what it means to live. Here, here's what it actually means to be alive. It is to be filled up with God's love and God's truth and to have that relationship with Christ. That's what it means. Christ in me is to live. What, what does it mean to live on this earth? It is that relationship that we have with Christ. It is not something else. Some other false salvation, some other thing that we have turned into an idol, right? We don't want to do that. Here is life. Here's what you are made for. Do you have it? 
do you value it? See, this indicates that what happens on Sunday morning may be much, much, much more important than what happens at any other time of the week where we have this special connection with God and our ears are opened and we say, I want to know you and to become like you and I want to receive your love and mercy in Christ. So important. That is what it means to truly be alive. And then it says this, guard your heart. And the idea is not, you know, just guard whatever's already in there. The idea is make wisdom central to everything that you are and then protect it. Don't let other things become the central thing in your life. Internalize God's wisdom, God's love, God's kindness. Because everything you do is going to come out of that. So when we do things, they come from places within us. They come from our value. When we talk too much, that comes from something inside of us. Okay, That comes from an internal value system. Whatever we do, it, it comes down to the intentions of our heart. And so if your heart, at the very core of it, if you have an idol there, it infects everything you do. So just, uh, I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys. You know, you're getting ready to have a cup of tea. Uh, and um, you begin to taste it, and something, something, ugh, some, something's not right here. Ugh, ugh, what's going on, right? And so, what do you do? Uh, you go and you open up the fridge and you you pick out that you just added the smallest dash of milk, but it turns out that that dash of milk was curdled, right? And it just infects your tea. You have a bad cup of tea. This is what happens with our heart with an idol. That bad idol comes out and it ruins the tea of life for us. But that's what happens. It infects it. And yet on the other side, if at our core is God's wisdom, Christ dwelling in us, that infects everything we do and makes it lovely. And so he says, he gives a first illustration. He says, talking about speech. If you value, if you value wisdom and that's your, your heart, then you, you know, you stop lying. You stop being malicious in your speech because God is loving. Why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. You value that. So if somebody is um, lying a lot, if someone is uh, making crude jokes a lot, you know, guess what? That says about what's in their heart. Excuses off. Out of the heart flows. And then it goes on to say, keep your eyes straight ahead. Don't turn to the right or the left. And the idea there is we have made Christ our central thing, and we go about living for it. And so we, we, we wake up and we say, today I'm living for the king. And that's like staying on course, staying on target, walking the path. And you're not going to go to the left or look to the right. Whenever you run a race, you know what they say? Don't turn your head. That's what they say. You turn your head, you lose momentum. You turn your head to see who's behind you. They overtake you. Don't turn your head. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Where do you look? You look at the finish line. You're going to be there soon. And the finish line is pleasing God. And we will please God if we have faith. That's what it says. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we could turn that around. Every act of faith done towards God pleases him. So that's our message. Treasure wisdom. Be open. Really listen because it will help you start right. It will keep you going. It will make sure you don't get lost on the way. Now, uh, I have this quote here. It says, Christianity tells us to stop dying, to start really living, and go more and more into life until we spend eternity with God. Isn't that a lovely... I, I want to end the message on this, this note of gentleness. What, what is it that I want for you? I want you to stop dying. I want you to start really living. I want you to live more and more and more until eternity and then more and more and more and more and more forever and ever. That's what God wants for you. And all you have to do is turn to him, repent, believe him, trust in Jesus. And it's all yours. What do you need to do? It depends on where you are. Uh, have you started on your journey? 
Have you started on this journey? If you if you have not re repented and you've not surrendered to the Lord, you're not going to listen to him, that's where you're at, then you've not started your journey. And if you've not started your journey, then you're not going where you were meant to go. And you're not going to end up where you want. So don't do that. <laughs> Trust the Lord. Uh, do you need to keep going? And particularly what I mean is, do you need to start shining sin? I need to start shining sin. I, I imagine that there are other people in here that need to start shining sin if I need to. What do you need to say, that's not the path for me? What do you need to say, I'm not even going to walk that direction? What's your jelly donuts? <laughs> Finally, is Christ really your central thing? Are you living with your eyes straight ahead, looking towards the goal of Christ? Or are you living, looking here and there, finding the next interesting thing that's going to fill you up? Oh, that didn't fill me up. Maybe this one will. Maybe if I achieve this, maybe if I win that, maybe if I have enough money, maybe if I have enough of the blah, the blah, it's not going to satisfy you. It will not be the path that leads to salvation. Uh, here's the path. Christ, who crucified, come, lay down your life, and you will live. Make Christ your everything every day. And it will just get better and better and better and better. Make anything else your everything every day. And you'll just be more and more let down. Let's choose Christ. Let's pray.